What can we learn from the number one CEO in the world? Are walkie-talkies the future of communication? Is your doctor going to be a bot? We'll look at these topics and much more on Disruptive FM, episode 29. Roll the title. It's Disruptive FM. Disruptive FM. Disruptive FM. Welcome to Disruptive FM, where business and culture collide. Sponsored by Microsoft and Branding Strategy Insider, with your host, Jeffrey Cologne. Okay, here we go! Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Disruptive FM, episode 29 for the week ending Friday the 14th of December, 2018. We missed a couple of weeks due to some video shoots in New York City, but we're glad to be back with you. I'm Jeffrey Cologne, your host for the next quarter hour as we examine the culture of business and check out the latest news in marketing, tech, media, and popular culture. Pump up that volume. Here are this week's trending topics. Number one CEO. With the fact that it's December while you're listening to this, we all know what that means. Yup. Tons of year-end lists and new year predictions. One list last week caught our eye in particular. The rankings for top chief executive officers in the world for the year 2018. And with little surprise, one of those lists compiled by a company named Comparably, which tracks compensation, culture, and career, has ranked my boss, CEO Satya Nadella of Microsoft, at number one. Now, I tried to get many of my colleagues to go on the record and speak with me about this, but I got a lot of declines. Not because it's a controversial topic. But a company still in transformation is always trying to find the future. And there is work to be done. And I think Satya would like it that way. What we mean by this is this list doesn't mean much until Nadella is complete with his transformation plans. And that could be never if you understand the concept of future proofing. One that Nadella knows quite well. He's tried to get the company to adopt it along with partners and peers. What future-proofing means is we all transform to become verbs instead of nouns. We become fluid with no endpoint in mind. We are constantly evolving, adopting, reshaping, and remixing. This is difficult for most companies to do, especially those of a legacy nature. Once set in your ways, it can be difficult to figure out how to reshape yourself from a solid to a liquid. But Nadella has explained his leadership style And a pretty simple analogy we wanted to share with you here at DFM, because we think it is applicable for all of us as we enter 2019. Quoting Nadella, A lot of what I do and how I think has been shaped by my family and my overall life experiences. Many who know me say I am also defined by my curiosity and thirst for learning. I buy more books than I can finish. I sign up for more online courses than I can complete. I fundamentally believe that if you are not learning new things, you stop doing great and useful things. So family, curiosity, and hunger for knowledge all define me. End quote. We love that those three things are what define Nadella, and we plan to apply them to our passions here at DFM in 2019. We hope you do the same. Trending Topics on DFM. Walkie-talkie. Remember when you were a kid and you had a walkie-talkie? How exciting that was. Hearing another person who was nearby and communicating via voice. The little sound that it made when you went to talk. Every few decades, history repeats. In the late 1990s, Nextel actually recreated the walkie-talkie technology that was used by so many in the service industry. Now in the late 2010s, Instagram, yes, you heard that correctly, Instagram has plans to bring the walkie-talkie all back again. That's right, a walkie-talkie feature as part of their messaging service. Now, why would anyone want this, especially with Instagram, and how will it work? Well, to send a voice message, You simply tap on the app's messaging icon and then press and hold the microphone button inside the text box at the bottom of the display. And you say what you have to say. No different than most other voice technology out there. 
Of course, once you're done, you release that button and your audio message will immediately send. If you fluff your words or you misspeak, you can start over by dragging your finger to the trash can on the left side of the text box. Be careful, though. Once you take your finger off the display, there's no way to stop your voice message from sending. There is, however, another way to send an audio message. Simply tap on the messaging icon and hold your phone to your ear. A lot like Anchor, for those who've ever used that technology. When you hear a beep, start speaking. Then once you're done, tap on the send icon. If you receive a voice message, you can listen to it through the speaker used for phone calls on your phone or via the device's main speaker by tapping on the play button. Now, this is very, very weird if we think about it, because voice apps, especially walkie-talkie apps, really were meant for other applications and services. In some respects, it makes much more sense with Twitter than with Instagram. And Instagram is late to the party when it comes to the launch of voice messages. With messaging apps such as Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, Snapchat, and iMessage already offering these features. And why is this feature on a photo app? They don't seem related. Is it possible that simply sharing photos isn't enough and the user experience team at Instagram wants you to reach out and hear someone rather than just see them? This also could be because Facebook is faltering as the dominant social app. And this could be the next play for attention as Instagram pivots into a true messaging app. And we know that voice is very important with any messaging app. Whatever the case might be, voice is only gaining steam and could reckon with visuals and text in the universal battle for two-way communication. Over and out. Trending topics on DFM. Paging Dr. Bot. What happens when you no longer need a primary care physician? This is ultimately happening now as chatbots become the go-to question and answer maker for you instead of a human doctor. Not for every ailment will we require a human to tell us what to do anymore. Now, why is this happening? Is it to get rid of humans? Actually, it's the opposite. Certain ailments that require long waiting lists to see a human doctor who will only tell us to go see another human doctor who's a specialist, can now be fast-tracked with machine learning chatbots. And this is where it will get interesting. Because if you think you are speaking with a doctor, but you're really speaking with a machine, or I should say, with machine learning algorithms, how much will we trust the machine learning algorithms with our overall health? This isn't just a medicinal test, but possibly a test on what we feel is comfortable or what we feel is creepy. Saying these words sort of sounds creepy at the moment, but give it a little bit of time, and we all might say, I need to go speak to my doctor, Bot. He'll tell me what to do. It's Disruptive FM. Communications. The Business Culture Podcast. They say if you listen closely, you can hear the sound of today. It's Disruptive FM, the culture of business, brought to you by Microsoft Advertising and Branding Strategy Insider. I'm Jeffrey Colon. Reach out and touch us on social media. Instagram and Twitter handle is at Disruptive FM and connect with me personally on Instagram or Twitter at DJGEOFFE. And for more in-depth analysis on some of these topics, check out BingAds.com slash Intelligence Search brandingstrategyinsider.com Also, create better video with Iographer. They make accessories for your mobile devices so you can make professional quality looking videos. Learn more about all the products we use here at DFM at iographer.com Okay, it's the time of year when we look back at some of the things that caught our attention in the background from one of our favorite albums this year. AAL also known as Against All Logic, 2012 through 2017. The 
track is called This Old House Is All I Have. Let's listen in. This old house, this old house, this old made easy. Oh, it's just made easy. Oh, it's just Against All Logic is a side project of the left field electronica artist Nicholas Yar. Billed as his house album, 2012 through 2017 is much more accessible than Yar's usual experimental work. And it was stuck on repeat for us for a good chunk of 2018. Against All Logic, our AAL. Again, the album title is 2012 through 2017. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Time for the remix on what some people think is new, but is really old. Disruptive FM presents... Stop! It's the motherfucking remix! <clears throat> Everything is a remix. Remix! We all know that streaming music has changed how we consume it. But what if we at DFM were to tell you the way music is produced and written has been changed by streaming. But also that this isn't a new concept because songs have always been written based on market research. You don't believe us, but uh, hey, we have the proof. Streaming's data collection makes songs simpler. Albums used to be like movies with characters, settings, and climaxes. But the data that labels now use to make hit songs is changing that. More and more artists are starting to follow the trends set by songs like Lil Uzi's 2017's The Way Life Goes. The song starts on the first beat of a chorus and ends on the very last beat of a chorus. There are no instrumental intros, bridges, or even beat drops. This ruthless efficiency is only expected when artists know at what exact point you fast-forwarded past their newest underwhelming single. Now, songs have been getting simpler for the last two decades, ever since visualization. Yes, when you create a song using software, you can actually see what parts are more popular. One can see algorithms and compare them to research feedback. So this is nothing new. But streaming data is simply democratizing it at a faster rate. Small streaming profits make songs shorter. Streaming pays artists much less than sales from CDs, tour tickets, or merchandise. Lil Uzi Vert made only about half a penny per listen for the 1.3 billion times that his song Exo Tour Lilf 3 was streamed. When streaming pays such small profits, musicians have no reason to release long songs. The average length of a song on Lil Pump's self-titled 2017 album is less than two and a half minutes. Its hit single, Gucci Gang, barely clocks two minutes, coming in at just two minutes and four seconds. Now, we might think this is new, but radio edits have been around two minutes forever, going all the way back to almost the 1950s. This is because publishers got paid more when the song was played in full, when played on radio. Nothing new to see here, folks. Now, how about streaming's customization, making songs built to order? Online streaming gives listeners the power to change an album's volume, song order, and even lyrics. Some artists are even creating albums that purposefully leave such decisions to their audiences to choose. Songs from Kanye West's 2016 album, The Life of Pablo, are full of blank silence, alternative versions, instrumentals without vocals, and acapellas without instruments. With so much of the canvas yet to be filled, Kanye's listeners become much more than fans. They become collaborators. Now, the question here is, have these people never heard of a mixtape or a remix? Or the fact that there were stems that are all available on YouTube to remix long before streaming? Come on, people. You've proven our point. We have always said the world is one big remix. And it truly is. Now, no matter what type of gift wrapping you put on it, everything is a remix. Okay, time to check out some brewing stories you should have your eye on. It's a segment we call On the Radar. 
Here's what's on our radar. Here's what's on our radar. Number one. Furniture chains are catering for millennials who are more do it for me than do it yourself. IKEA has introduced a range that doesn't require screws or bolts. Home Depot has even released a YouTube video series on how to use a tape measure. Oh my goodness. The trend comes as part of a recent study that found one in 10 millennials would rather pay someone to change a light bulb for them. Number two. Google plans to invest $1 billion in a campus in New York City, where it will also double its current 7,000 employee headcount in the next decade. The new building, known as Google Hudson Square, will expand the tech giant's footprint in the city by 1.7 million square feet and house its global business organization. Google purchased Chelsea Market, also in Manhattan, earlier this year for $2.4 billion. Tech rival Apple recently announced a big expansion in Austin, Texas, and Amazon has chosen Long Island City, Queens, as part of its new headquarters. Number three. Netflix could be headed to the Oscars after the release of the film Roma last week. And there are more movies planned for the streaming giant. The Mexican director Alfonso Cuaron's film is likely to give Netflix its first Best Picture nomination. Netflix plans up to 55 original movies a year and has works forthcoming from Martin Scorsese, Steven Soderbergh, Dee Reese, Guillermo del Toro, Noah Baumbach, and Michael Bay. That's a wrap for our 29th episode of DFM. Follow me on Twitter or Instagram at DJGEOFFE. Follow Disruptive FM on Twitter or Instagram at Disruptive FM. And you can read more in depth content via our three sponsors thingads.com slash intelligent search, branding strategy insider.com, and iographer.com. Next week, Cheryl Barbie, our contributor at large, is back with our year end look back and year ahead predictions on our final episode of the calendar year, the big episode 30. We'll talk about everything from Amazon team to targeting to personalization to where is the next headquarter five. Until then, for everyone here at DFM, thanks for checking us out. I'm Jeffrey Cologne. Catch you soon. You've been listening to Disruptive FM with Microsoft Communications designer Jeffrey Cologne. All thoughts are his own. Disruptive FM is produced in Los Angeles by Feeler Media. 